very good evening to all our audiences across the social media platform. Welcome to Aura the Inspiration. From the deepest pages of history till the infinite years ahead, a woman is looked up as an embodiment of power. The power to create, the power to inculcate, the power to withstand, the power to proceed. A woman standing indispensable as a mother, daughter, wife, sibling, and friend has also proven her vigor to perceive, compete, and succeed. To stand for herself, to commit herself, and to fight for her dreams is not an easy day privilege, and it does not come very easy her way. She needs to put in her extra zeal, uh, push to ensure she is not stopped by the implicit pullback strings, be it societal, emotional, or customary with no compromise to her family commitment and duties and to succeed in her professional endeavor is a craving every woman would want to strive for. Here at Aura, the inspiration, we are attempting to get the successful women both pro personally and professionally talk on their journey and with heaps of excitement, let's begin. Today on our show, we've got an exemplary woman who has been successful in various pages of her life. And I'm so proud to welcome Mrs. Rehena Amir, the counselor for uh, the London City Corporation. So may I request uh, Mrs. Susan Koshi, Editor-in-Chief, Presence, to give a brief uh, introduction to Mrs. Rehena Amir. Thank you, Priya. Ms. Rehena Banu Amir is an entrepreneur based in the United Kingdom. She imprinted a distinguished landmark when she became the first India-born woman to be elected as councillor in the City of London Corporation. She stood as an independent candidate. Ms. Rehena Amir was born and raised in her very own Nambahuru Chennai. Today, she is a London-based business owner with 20 years of experience in information technology and in managing and successfully delivering multi-country, large, complex IT and business transformation projects for clients in the city and worldwide. Prime Point Foundation had the privilege of her physical presence at the launch of the 150th edition of e-magazine Presence at Chennai in August 2019. In her message at the function, Ms. Rehana said, we need to create a legacy for the future. Ms. Rehana continues to do just that as she adorns a multifaceted role as entrepreneur, leader, administrator, politician, and lady of her family, besides many more. Ms. Rehana, a warm welcome to you, madam. It is our privilege to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. Priya? Yeah, yes, Rehana. Thank you, uh, Priya. Thank you, Susan. Really very uh, feeling very honored and privileged to be here. Uh, amongst uh, such wonderful women and uh, good evening to everyone who are viewing us and uh, it's really a delight to see that this very sensitive topic in terms of what women can do can create and uh, your amazing introduction uh, introduction in terms of uh, associating women with so many facets of the whole uh, uh, life cycle I think uh, it, it, it's an amazing uh, thing that you women are doing, of course, Mr. Srinivasan as well uh, from Prime Point Foundation. So I would like to even thank him for this opportunity and for this wonderful idea and the concept that you've really brought in, especially during this COVID times where people are feeling really demotivated, need some inspiration. So it's a good uh, initiative, I would say, and I would like to congratulate all the team here to like, you know, putting up something so fabulous like Aura and bringing really like-minded uh, like women to come and share their experiences, their journey and uh, create that legacy for all of us, inshallah, going forward. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your opening remarks. And uh, you are one uh, woman who most of the youngsters would want to hear your story, who want to get inspired. I'm sure you're not uh, way too older for us to be called like we getting inspired from you, but I'm, I'm glad that you started your career in a very earlier uh, stage of your life. And we're really, very really excited to hear your, uh, your journey, your, your experiences, 
and uh, our take backs from this uh, conversation. So to quickly uh, run through, we've got three segments, ma'am. Uh, segment one is called One Step Closer, where we get to know a little more closer about you, about your family, about the way you have grown. And the second segment is Tides and Rights, where we're going to hear about all the challenges that you have faced and the smart way you have chosen to, uh, you know, um, cross over those, um, 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 you know, barricades. And the third segment is Impression Intense, where you're going to uh, share the most uh, uh, powerful part of yours with us so that we can actually take it back and then, you know, use it at the right time when uh, we face similar challenges as what you have faced. So with no further delay, ma'am, can we start? So I would like to thank you for asking that question because it takes me back to my memory lane, my childhood days. So on that front, I would say uh, like, you know, I'm typically born in a very conventional uh, family where uh, uh, my father was into business, my mother, a homemaker, of course, she was working as well, but because of family, she had to give up her garment job. And then uh, we are totally five siblings and I'm the eldest of all. And um, extremely a very uh, strict uh, family because we were four daughters one son so you know back in those days uh, raising a girl child is very like you know parents see that as a very responsible kind of a role and thing so we were very protected and all those things but one thing which was very different in our family is uh, my mother was a visionary and uh, I would say um, when I say visionary, she asked, she didn't see the difference between a, a, a girl child or a, uh, or a male child as such. And uh, one common thing both my parents felt was education. And this they never compromised uh, on it. And uh, they felt that uh, they need to give us the best education uh, to all the five children and always that kind of a uh, like you know atmosphere was there at home like only to like you know um, study well perform well and uh, being and always in those days it was like you know uh, the girls will go uh, into medicine the boys into engineering so that's the kind of mindset I was uh, uh, grown up uh, with and equally the other thing though my father was into business um, and I'm, I'm me being the eldest, uh, he always uh, like, you know, um, took me along with him to his shop where he uh, gave me some petty tasks to do, like, you know, to pack because my father was a jeweler. Um, so he used to like, you know, ask me to pack those uh, jewels whenever he sold to. And I, I observed seeing my father, how he communicates, how he handles customers, what he talks. And he was also the leader of the, uh, the president of the jewelry association of uh, that locality. And I used to observe how my father was that leader figure where people come to take his advice, um, uh, share their problems. So it was a combination of uh, like, you know, the, the learning environment at home and the external environment. So that is where I would say that uh, working relationship of the mother and father in upbringing their children. And that is something uh, I've witnessed it first time in personally. And that as an outcome is what I am today here. So that goes in like, you know, that both the, the, the mother and the father have to work hand in hand to define what your child needs to be come or should become in the society so at that moment i didn't understand all these things now today me being a parent myself so that's something i have so that's that's the kind of childhood i had where education was important and because of education today i've been able to like you know get, get into another country and establish a, a name fame for myself for my whole family as such and uh, so there was no like you know compromise between a girl child or a, a male child that was something where did you do your schooling, your college? So I studied at uh, St. William's Anglo-Indian High School. Um, I did up until the 10th there. And uh, of course, I, I mean, uh, I was academically good. Uh, of course, my teachers should uh, uh, say that. But to my knowledge, I, I, I was uh, uh, good in my academics and equally sports. That's something as well I, I was good at. So I was a good athlete and uh, um, I, I also used to play netball. And... Uh, so because of sports, I think uh, uh, till now, God's grace, I feel fit and healthy. So that's something we need to encourage our children to like, you know, be active in all these uh, uh, outside activities. And um, then up until the 10th, I studied there. Then 11th and 12th, I moved to Adish Vidyalaya, took up the science because I wanted to become a doctor since childhood. That was really ingrained in my head that... Uh, Rehana is equal to doctor, doctor is equal to Rehana. That's the kind of like, you know, my mother made it very firm in my head that 
you have to become a doctor and that's what she pushed me all the time compared to all my other siblings i think mothers know uh, which child can can be pushed and uh, can endure all these pressures and things so of all the five now this is something i haven't shared much outside but the pressure on me was so much uh in a good way i would say but that time i used to get really annoyed i used to fight with my mother like you know why are you pressurizing me i'm already studying well my other siblings you need to focus on them she will say nay you have to i know you can do and say if i get a third or a fourth rank she'll say what stopped you from getting a first rank so that was a kind of pressure and uh, rather than saying like you know what i achieved it was why did you not achieve that and that time i used to really get annoyed with her and today i can understand why my mother did that because she pushed me she made me push 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 myself and today whatever the challenges i face i am able to push myself to the like you know to the brim to say not to give up and work hard to it then inshallah we will achieve it so that's something i had then my college uh, i uh, and that's a big story that that was the first failure i encountered in my life and i felt my whole life was shattered 11th and 12th um, i mean i studied well i got really um, very high marks but just by a small fraction i missed my merit seat in uh, within tamil nadu because that time it was only by that merit quota so i was totally shattered and to my bad luck that was a time when the syllabus changed their markings changed and the way like you know the selections changed and everything all ha- had to happen at that time and i was totally devastated and um, but i did try in uh, other uh, states as well and uh, uh, god's grace i got an admission in bangalore uh, to study my medicine and just uh, two days i think yeah two days before i could travel for my counseling and things um, some of our relatives like you know i don't know for know where they came that day to our house and they just said like you know she is your eldest daughter she looks i mean i i i recently look good as well and they were saying she is so beautiful and uh, uh, she is your first daughter and the first one in the whole family are you going to send her alone to study in bangalore and uh, so that kind of a uh, mindset and then uh, at that time there were some these communal violences happening around in different states especially because of the water issue that time and my father got a little nervous and he said no going that's it just one statement you're not going to go anywhere if you want to study you study here or you try next year and uh, so i mean my whole life toppled that that within that half an hour my whole life toppled and um, i i was so upset i told my father i'm not going to study you get me married i really don't want to study i'm giving up in my life that's it so that is how it was so intense and um, again thanks to my parents they said okay this year happened as happened it's okay next year inshallah we will try and then next year again i was all excited but my mother said you have to get into college you can't just waste your year like this she got me an admission at sit college and uh, they chose uh, bsc chemistry then i was like you know i became a kind of a rebel that time i said i won't study i said you are putting me in some uh, course which i don't want then i said i won't listen to you i will go to bsc zoology i mean this is all something uh, i feel like you know sometimes i laugh when i think of the silly things i did but that is how we are at that age of 17 18 and uh, but thanks to my parents they were very patient with me and uh, they ensured that i get into a degree course that that is all they were behind me and then um, um, i i said no i want to do this uh, all you came and went uh, went i just finished off that bsc zoology i finish and then uh, i i get into the uh, course i i studied bsc zoology and thanks to my teachers in the college again wonderful women around me who really uh, like you know supported me and uh, they said it's okay life is like this but you have to move on so my teachers played a very fundamental role in terms of creating that mind shift in me and then after that uh, um i i did my nit it course because i felt uh, it's not that only i need to focus on science and i used to read a lot of newspapers and uh, get a lot of knowledge and then i felt i need to know or get into it so then i did my it course then i did a diploma in export import management so i just got a overall all rounder experience and then after that uh, i happened to meet my husband on in one uh, 
uh, independence day occasion and things and then uh, we got married so i mean it was a uh, uh, an arranged marriage with the families and then uh, my uh, again my life changed priority was only a uh, family uh, career uh, career was something i forgot for time being but I was really focusing on uh, uh, marriage family and those sort of things but of course there was an inherent uh, like you know you, uh, how old were you when you got married i was i just uh, uh, turned 21 it was after immediately after my uh, my 21st birthday i got married so it was okay. just i think 10 days of uh, so i was between that 20 21 uh, age and my husband was only 22 that time when he married so quite an early marriage and it comes with its own benefits and uh, of course my husband was like you know managing two businesses and uh, economically independent active and things so that's something my father really liked about him at that young age he was independent on his own and uh, yeah we married and uh, one thing i just wanted to share here uh, priya because this is something i've uh, seen in my life when when a marriage happens like you know these days i mean to what those time up until now and this is also one of the reason why there are so many breakups in marriages and things people when they get married uh, immediately they start thinking of uh, uh, like you know when will we buy our own house first when will we become career independent when will we have economic uh, uh, independence and all those sort of all those things come into the, the, it's 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 um, it's no harm thinking of those things but when two individuals marry and they start a life i think the first year they need to focus on building a relationship to understand each other and this is where they miss and that leads to all these sort of uh, like you know misunderstandings family pressures and all those sort of things so this is something i really wanted to through this uh, program i wanted to say if when you get married focus one or two years on building that relationship understanding what each other is then your rest of the life journey becomes easier and this is what we did in my family my husband and i because we were young we are possibly maybe we just like you know we were only thinking about each other building the relationship understanding our strengths weakness and how we can work together complement each other to achieve that big dream that we had for our family and uh, with that uh, like you know with that thought nine years passed and then uh, around after nine years of marriage and having two children uh, i mean i was working as well that time i had a good uh, corporate career i came to my husband and i said i want to go abroad and study is this something you can support me do you think i mean by then you had nine year old child when you wanted to go abroad and study uh yeah i had uh, my after one year so yes eight, eight years my son was eight my daughter was uh, six five and a half six years and why is it you decided man why why was the need to go abroad and study see uh, of course i was working uh, um, like you know at a corporate level at a senior like you know uh, at a vice president hr level i was working and uh, i mean as i said i read a lot i i browse internet a lot i see what's happening around the world and for me that urge was there that i really need need to take my life to the next level and i'm someone who loves challenges who loves to take risk who loves to like you know explore travel i'm a little that kind of uh, inherently my nature is like that and uh, i wanted to give a, a good uh, quality of life for my children especially from the education front so i felt i mean if i go study see how the world is then maybe i can like you know give the same to my children much better and second uh, for my husband's business as well i felt it would be a good opportunity to like you know take the business global so there were uh, multiple things that were running in my mind and uh, um, i mean that's something he really i mean i've been uh, god has been kind with me and i really thank my husband for uh, for the kind of like you know the thought process he comes with the kind of mindset he has uh, though even his family is a very uh, conventional traditional family we were a joint family where all the brothers lived in the same house and i was the youngest daughter in law then so they are totally uh, nine siblings so six sons three daughters so you can imagine what the kind of family dynamics was and i was the youngest uh, daughter in law then and um, i mean it was a big shocker like when anyone everyone thought heard that rehana is going abroad to study and uh, of course my brother and my uh, brother in law were, were they studying here 
um with that confidence i just told my husband like you know i want to go study abroad can you help me can you support me this is the words i said can you support me and uh, and one you said what others don't know i need to so you know for any of these kind of critical decisions in our life uh, we always go to the marina beach the gandhi beach basically and uh, after 10 we go sit whatever i feel like i should that's the place where like you know where people are calm and then of away from all the tensions so that is also again important the timing is very important when you have to discuss with your spouse be it for a man or be it for a woman the timing is very important at what time you want to say what are the discussions you want to have and what sort of environment you want to have those discussions in and i'm very particular of all those things so that because these are very life critical decisions so then um, uh, we went at around that 10 o'clock that night and i said see i want to do these things is that something you can support me and from my side um, these these things 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 i have arranged so for every question he want he asked me i had answers for that so that's something i always go well prepared be it in my personal life or in my professional life if i go anywhere for any decision making or a discussion i'll go well prepared what are the possible questions they will ask and what sort of answers i have and whether are they convincing answers if i'm not convinced then how can i expect the others to get convinced so that's something i always inculcate as a habit and uh, he was quite convinced and uh, he said yes chalo of course i'm happy to uh, support you and within 10 days everything got arranged and uh, i applied for for a scholarship as well always even in my school, uh, college days uh, with nit as well i got almost 75% scholarship and that's something i'm very like you know firm that i have to work hard uh, go on merit rather than like you know um, that's something i really uh, i challenge myself to be on a merit based uh, progress and uh, so yeah and uh, uh, got a good scholarship then came up uh, to the uk studied my intention was purely to study and go back and uh, so i studied um, alhamdulillah i got uh, very high marks i topped the whole cohort i was the topper there and i had to leave my children in my mom's place um, of course i i involved my children as well in the decision making so i asked them uh, where do you want to stay are you okay if mama goes abroad and studies do you want to be like you know um, what is were, how long were they far from you like one um, one, uh, one year two months i would say 14 14 to 15 months so they were of a, a strong decision as a mother man like uh, see know. it was see this is where I, i i just mentioned about it involving the children in the decision making and that's something we as parents have inculcated that habit in our house so it's not only the elders take the decision we so i'm we, asking as a person as a mother uh, it was extremely tough Uh, uh i mean i was very emotional those times um and uh, but i felt this is for them we are doing and the biggest support was my husband because my husband is there my mom is there so they will be able to like you know manage and uh, uh, fill that gap of me not being there so my mother played a very crucial role my uh, my father played a crucial role of course my mother in law also was there and uh, my husband especially he he managed it very beautifully and uh, without a man's support it is a, a little challenging if you want to do so many things keeping it happy but of course there were uh, a lot of challenges when i wanted to come and study abroad like you know a lot of my other relatives they literally stopped uh, to like you know tell my husband where i was there in front of them to say you are doing a wrong thing you are sending your wife uh, abroad she would like you know surpass you all those sort of uh, unnecessary gossip but he was very firm he said mm, it is her life if she is capable of and uh, if she can achieve let she live her dreams who are we to stop her as long as she is able to manage family and uh, like you know live up her dreams and aspirations we should give her the chance and that was something my husband was very firm and uh, no matter what he said you just go ahead i'll take care of everything so so that family bonding is very important so that one two years which i said that really helped us to understand each other well and uh, grow together so my my inspiration i would say after my mother and father it's my husband who inspired me who pushed me he said you just go ahead and do whatever is there i am there to support you so that was something good Actually, this is really a big take back which you are giving us ma'am you know 
um, the rightly put because in this very um, uh, impatient and uh, uh, you know showing that intolerance to people or giving that space of yours to another person coming into your life like your spouse uh, is a transition for every woman and uh, most of us now tend to get married a little later in our age because like we want to stabilize in our profession uh, study well um, like get financially independent which is very essential is what I feel um, so th at that point in time when you actually get somebody uh, close to you uh, you know as your partner so it is very essential for uh, for the for the relationship to be strong so invest time to know each other without any judgments or without any um, you know uh, um, perception or uh, you know presuming that this is the person uh, I think that's that's very essential and that's a very strong point very subtly which you have put because had not you known your your partner better it would have been such a big challenge because you would have been ending making him understand your aspiration rather him coming and supporting you like you know you're you're capable of doing this so that that's a beautiful uh, uh, you know take back on on the on the fa on the family front which you have actually given I and mean, what is your youngest achievement like uh, as uh, you know when you just look back the youngest achievement of yours okay um I mean, at 19, uh, when I did my export import, uh, uh, like, you know, course, I was really driven that I want to be an exporter. And uh, my father was into jewelry business. And I really forced him, like, you know, that you should start uh, imports, exports. And uh, just single handedly at the age of 19, I went, got the ex import export license done for my father. And my, my father was shocked. And he said, How did you manage to do that? And I didn't tell anything to my father. I just got the letters, like, you know, uh, drafted, signed, and I said, you just wait, I'll give you a surprise. And that was something uh, as a 19 year old that time to get an import export license on my own was something really, I felt really good about myself that I did something different. And my father valued that as well, I would say. Oh. That in was fact, quite you're the first uh, child in your family. Yes. Uh, so that adds more of a responsibility over being a, a girl child, because usually the girl child, uh, you know, customarily in India, we look up to them for taking up uh, the emotional, uh, you know, uh, the space from the parents. So you being the, uh, you know, the first child, I'm sure you would have had more things to handle as a youngster or even till now where you have to one thing what he always used to tell me is and um, that's something it's still strong in my mind he says uh, see i'll put i'll invest all my uh, time uh, resources everything on you and seeing you the other siblings will definitely like you know learn from you and you will have to take care of them and that was very strong in my mind and up until even today me being the eldest i ensure that like you know all my siblings are doing well if there's any issues if there's anything i can help and support so that um, as a child i was really uh, ingrained very hard uh, in my mind that me being the eldest after my parents it is me who has to like you know be there as that family pillar to support everyone so be so they didn't see the difference that i'm a woman or a, 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 like you know a man they didn't see that they just said you're the eldest you need to be the caretaker uh, whether we are there or not there so that was something uh, my father taught me very hard i'm sure the viewers now would have understood you are a, you are a wonderful combination of a woman who has high aspirations at the same time who respects family and family values so this is exactly the, the combination which we're trying to elate uh, so because see, family is something very important and wherever I go, I hear a lot of women saying like, you know, my family doesn't support, but have they th thought to themselves, um, what have they like, you know, uh, demonstrated to their families to make them understand who you are as a person and why should they support? And I always tell them, if you're not able to get the support of your family, it is extremely very hard to get the support from the outside world. So first, as a case study, that is what I tell them. As a case study, get your husband convinced, your children convinced, your in-laws convinced. And with that, 50% of your battle is won. So they need to, and that cannot be happened with fights or with any uh, differences. Even today, mashallah, it's been 26 years of our married life. And uh, I've been very cordial with my in-laws, even though they were like, you know, initial hiccups in terms of me going abroad and studying. But I brought everyone together. I, I, I told them, 
see how it's going to add value how it's going to like you know help build the family as such and uh, so we need to take along with us the family we cannot do things in isolation and especially the the kind of uh, cultural background we co come from especially india we are very family oriented people and this is something very fundamental for our culture so when people say like you know it's always they talk of two extremes either you do with the support i mean uh, you you do independently or otherwise you can't do it you have or you have to compromise the family to achieve but there is a a middle path a hybrid which i say that with the support of the family your own aspirations put together build that bigger power and family is very important and family has to be prioritized the moment you prioritize family the family will start supporting you and this has been a, a very good example in my life absolutely true and uh, how did you manage uh, your maternity ma'am uh, like uh, when you had your maternity break uh, so did did you take a complete sabbatical or like uh, where you uh, i uh, yeah i mean that was again a very high uh, i would say um, yes i did take a short break uh, maybe for my first child it was first child so i took that whole uh, uh, one year break but with my second child uh, i was 25 when uh, my daughter was born so i was working uh, as well at that time so i just took around maybe um, i would say five months break because that time in india it wasn't a very strict uh, maternity uh, breaks and things and uh, so i just took five uh, months uh, uh, maternity leave but then uh, like you know my house was quite close to my office as well so in the afternoons i'll come feed my baby then i used to go back because uh, like you know it's always good uh, that a mother weans at least for a year uh, their child so that's something i had to uh, manage it and my husband used to like you know tell me why are you really um, pushing yourself so hard and things but uh, i mean that drive will be there within you isn't it i mean you are 25 you are uh, like you know you're just entered into your career but you need to also manage the family so that's where that uh, time management priority management or task management i learned how to handle family children and my work so i i did have that initial challenges but again thanks to my uh, in laws my parents and my husband who were there with me in that journey to support and things but uh, it it was tough but it was manageable and the the main reason is because i had the good people around me who who supported me that they valued my aspirations and but i didn't compromise on the family to say oh just because they are helping me i'll take it for granted and uh, do as i wish no i was also responsible that i respected that uh, space they gave me i respected that support they gave me and it was a well balanced uh, uh, like you know give and take kind of a uh, working relationship yeah we can just hear it through i'm like you have uh, you have maintained a dignified balance between your personal and your professional mm -hmm. life and i'm very really happy for you and i'm sure it's going to go for decades uh, more so with this we finished the first segment ma'am thank you so much for those wonderful uh, insights of yours which we got to hear closer to your heart from uh, you know we got it uh, close to your heart and the second segment is um, tides and rides so this we are going to quickly ask you the challenges like you have faced so now that we have uh, you know heard the family side of uh, rehena ma'am now we would want to see that political side of rehena ma'am who had made history of being the first uh, counselor from india i think almost like about uh, uh, 900 dot years if i'm not wrong like you've made a history and uh, we're really very proud of it please tell us about it yeah sure certainly and uh... i mean if you see uh, yes i went back to the i mean back to india but then i came back to the uk on work and um, uh, one thing before getting into the politics side i just wanted to like you know share something uh, one thing which made me really confident and uh, like you know i would say survive initially when you come in as a migrant you have to survive in this country and things what made me really distinct or apart from the rest is um, my education background and the skills that i had so i was very firm on those aspects and that's something as i said like you know from childhood that whole thing connects and uh, when i landed in this country it was purely because of my educational background the skill sets the certifications that i had was quite made me distinct from uh, the rest of the others and that's where people were uh, like you know all these large companies 
gave me uh, very good positions. I mean, I was employed as a program director within my last employment, which I had. But after that, in 2011, I started my own business and things, of course, uh, with the networks and so on and so forth. But having worked all these years, that uh, uh, that innate desire was there that what have I done, uh, like, you know, one to give back to the community. And uh, it doesn't have to be uh, India or UK, whichever the place I am, what is that I can do? And the other thing which I was, it was always bothering me is that perception. Like, you know, the perception of a, of a Muslim Indian woman who comes as a migrant and uh, they just take think uh, like, you know, we have no value at all. I mean, they just think that we are here only to uh, feed and breed. And this perception is something that was really bothering me. And uh, what is that I can do to really change that perception? And what is that I can really create that big change or a big shift? And that's why, and politics is something I really like. When I say like, I follow, I read, uh, I uh, uh, like, you know, see what sort of policies are there and what is, has the impact on women, especially because if you see in politics, it's always male oriented, it's male dominant. And um, some men sitting there and thinking about what will suit women, how would they know? I mean, we are the ones who have to tell you to say what suits us or what doesn't uh, apply to us. And so all these kind of thought process, because I, I think a lot, I, uh, I observe a lot and I read a lot. And uh, so then, and I also believe in actions. So I just can't be cribbing about it or crying to say, well, the system is wrong and things. But what is that me as Rihanna, I can do to bring that change. And that's where I got into politics. I felt, no, maybe politics is the way, something I can do rather than doing nothing. So with that uh, aspiration and with that thought process, again, I discussed with my husband, I said, I want to get into politics. It was a big shock. Were there any from your family who was in politics? Sorry? Well, were there anybody from your, from your family who were in politics? No, no one. As how far did, as this, how did go. the part of politics strike you? See, um, when you want to really create that perception change, create that mass movement, create a, a buzz, then in that case, politics is the place. Yes, there are a lot of social activist campaigns, but that takes time. And I believe in quick actions. I believe in results. I, I like to show people. And uh, then the, I, I gave a lot of thinking to it. And I felt politics is the place where I can really like, you know, do something rather than to become something it is about doing something and um, yes of course that that was a very big major decision because the moment you enter into politics your whole life becomes public there's nothing like personal and things like you know people go uh, uh, search about you who you are what your background is and there's nothing for me to like you know hide or be uh, worried about I mean, we are uh, simple citizens, so why should I not go for it? And I always time myself. Any task I do in my life, I always have a time period. So I said, one year I get into it, I see if I can do something. If not, then I feel that this is not my cup of tea. But uh, God's grace, I got into a, a, a good network of women who mentored me. And uh, I do a lot of research. I go well prepared. So whatever little I could do from my side, I prepared. And of course, my family support was there. And I joined the Labour Party. And then uh, during that mentoring program, I got to know about the city elections. And that's where my business is. So I thought, why not get started from here? And uh, so I just uh, went and tried. And um, I did a lot of research to understand uh, the political dynamics of that place and to choose a word because I decided to stand as an independent candidate, uh, there's not support from the party as well. So the party doesn't support you. So I have to arrange my own. Candidates contesting elections in London. Yes, yeah. And that who is, is a foreigner? Huh? And who's a foreigner? Like who's not, but yeah, absolutely. why would you take that vow? Just that's what I'm trying to understand. I know you had that zeal, you wanted to be in politics, and you didn't get support from the political party then, and you wanted to contest as an independent, uh, uh, you know, candidate. Uh, don't you, didn't you think that was a bigger uh, risk you're taking, ma'am? No, I love to take risk. Uh, see, I, um, I, I plan my work well. I take a, a positive risk. And here, um, when I went into such a big decision, uh, I just first thought, I was thinking, what is there that I would lose? 
and that's something my my son always tells me about it like you know again a uh, 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 male support where he made me think what is there that you will lose here mama there's nothing for you to lose here it is only you will gain experience you will gain uh, uh, a lot of uh, like you know network with people and uh, with this learning you will come back again so when i when that mind thought when the when that thought process was there that there is nothing to lose then you get that confidence much uh, like you know and then that aggression a positive aggression that you want to do something be it winning or losing that secondary for me always in my life is that um, do the best do your best if this is something you like to do it do your best take risk and just forget all those external uh, like you know dis distractions a lot of people approach me and they said you are really foolish you are ru ruining your uh, career uh, that you are starting into politics and you are going to a place which is extremely tough to win and uh, it's not easy it's male centric yes it is male centric and it's male centric and extremely white male centric i would say um, see because there are other locations where they are mix of uh, asian people but this was purely uh, white uh, men uh, majority and of course they are all very good uh, counselors and uh, older men but still like you know me as a brown skin woman going into midst of uh, them is a is a kind of a different thing but i love challenges i love to take risks just a small um, question there if you could just tell me um, which was the most uh, critical uh, situation that you hand, handled it with the, the best of your um, potential okay uh, i went for a, a campaign at that time and i used to go alone i never used to go with uh, people around me and things because i used to feel like uh, i mean this is my election people are going to vote for me why should i have to take 10 people around me to like you know support me and things and um, so uh, that i used to get questioned i mean there's no one along with you i used to say no you're going to vote for me uh, so why should i bring so many other people with me if you have any questions ask me i'm there to answer and in one uh, uh, in in one place when i was uh, like you know talking to a group of people they said oh aren't you scared uh you are all alone you are a woman from a different country and your accent is still a neutral accent and uh, you don't know anything on politics aren't you scared and why should we vote for you i said uh, i mean there is nothing to get scared here and things i, I don't think uh, i've come into a dangerous place that someone is going to so is this your place a dangerous place so i had to flip that question back to him and he was like uh he he was amazed and um, so then um, i said see there is nothing to uh, because when i came to your organization i researched about your organization and you value competition you you want to take the best talent of the world into your company so here you have the best talent competing for an election with this academic background with this professional background with this personal success in life where i am a mother my two children studying at, in the top universities and uh, doing some good business so you have a really tough choice uh, my friend i said that now i made it very difficult for you to choose of the three who you want to vote so when i said that he was like totally uh, like you know shocked and he said my vote is for you rehana and uh, we are so pleased that we have a woman like you who is going to represent us and that was an amazing uh, moment in my life that i was able to create that perception i could see that first hand when people it's all about with what confidence you talk and with what conviction you speak and when i say conviction um, i've always maintained like you know wherever i go to any events i ensure i wear only my sarees i love to wear sarees and um, I, i'm not i don't feel ashamed of uh, like you know showing my background and things this is me and this is and this is what diversity is about in this whole world you need diversity of ideas you need diversity of people um, and only then you can really bring in innovation creativity new impetus and these were my like you know messages when i did my campaign and that was something very well received and uh, people like you know loved it and they elected me and what is the history you have created ma'am i'm the first indian born woman to be ever elected in the 950 years of history so okay. that's something it's not I a woman the first indian ever yes acha
Okay, that that's that's really a goosebump situation. Yeah. You know, that that's a moment of pride for all women, and like you've made all of us really very really proud. Yeah. I mean, it's always tough, but, it's tough, but uh, yeah. you just need to take it with ease. Like you know, break down the problems and one at a time. And I'm sure we wouldn't. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if you had seen it as a big elephant, it wouldn't have been very easy for you to, you know, fix the problems. I think you did the right way of taking and handling it uh, pieces, like bits by bits, like one step at a time. Yes. And uh, and that's that, that's a wonderful. Step. Yeah. Sorry. And you have proved it. I'm like uh, taking one step at a time is is a very successful mantra, and you've proved it right. Um, so glad that uh, have a, a big goal and break down that goal and uh, prioritize it how you want to do it build the right strategies and build the right allies for any task be it in personal life or professional life my advice will be always try to build allies you can do certain and things independently and but now that you are in a very um, uh, because politics is one of your uh, professions and i'm sure you are uh, also busy with your other businesses you're an entrepreneur and uh, you keep yourself busy throughout the day um at every point in time how is it being uh, a women politician and how is it being the women uh, a leader of an organization so does the gender really matter for somebody who are taking up the position of power Yes, it does matter. I mean, uh, though um, I'm in a well-developed country and things, but still there is a difference. Sometimes, like, you know, um, especially when you want to form allies and work together and things, you have to do a little extra hard work to prove your point to say that, like, you know, my idea is best, you need to consider this. Uh, it's changing, but still um, me coming up to this level as well, I see that as a challenge. Uh, on the business front, initially I had those issues, but now people have understood who uh, is Rihanna, what does Rihanna do, and what sort of like you know uh, proposals she has in terms of uh, uh, business uh, deals and things. So that that is purely black and white, like you know uh, because I, I run these companies, it's about profits or uh, uh, losses or what the values that we bring to our clients. So that becomes easier. But where the challenge was when I was employed and I was in a senior leadership position as well, but it was quite hard to, to first to get into that position was hard. And second, to sustain in that, to prove yourself how strong you are, how good you are, that was another a challenge. And even in politics as well, I do have a challenge sometimes, especially like, you know, because of my diverse background and things. And it takes a little harder for me to like, you know, spend more time to explain where I'm coming from, why I want to say this, and uh, the only support I get at that time is my merit on my background, my education, my skills. So because of that, I'm able to like, you know, very firmly uh, stand and put across my point. So it's still a challenge. I understand. I completely understand. And I'm sure every woman, uh, we are facing these challenges uh, in our day-to-day -day life, but um, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that we are able to manage that situation uh, with um, with pride and uh, we, we still are marching ahead to our dreams. And it, is more, it is more on, uh, like, you know, we, we ourselves underestimate our value. Actually, if you see, we have the same IQ, but we have a higher EQ when compared to the other gender. So people forget that they think we have a lesser EQ. No, actually we are much more, our emotional uh, quotient is much stronger. And when you start understanding that IQ, EQ ratio, no, that will really like, you know, make you feel strong and uh, make you just go ahead in life. So people forget that. With that uh, beautiful understanding, we are now ending up the second uh, segment of this program. We've come to the final segment of the program where uh, it's impression intense. So now it's the, cha uh, it's the time for all of us to take back all those uh, wonderful memories and wonderful uh, preaching of yours, which will help us throughout our life whenever we get to um, you know, um, see similar kind of a situation which you have actually faced. And to begin with, ma'am, um, we are very glad that you're fortunate enough to have a very understanding family. You had a family, uh, understanding family uh, before your marriage, understanding family after your marriage, and then you have uh, a good education at back of your head. But the point is, uh, what for women who don't have support from the family? So how do they take up their, um, yeah, their yeah, aspirations? 
yeah for them i would say like you know work on your own self first because um, one needs to develop themselves to be really strong mentally emotionally and uh, when you have that strength within you that endurance to like you know bear these rejections is easier and the second part which they need to focus on on resilience and uh, so you will have a lot of these challenges kickbacks not supporting but you need to have that drive within you to be resilient that you stand up to, um, i mean you want to go uh, cry out your uh, like you know your emotions do that but don't keep that as a like you know make it too long max is max keep it for 24 hours then the next day stand up and say i'm ready to face no matter what happens i will uh, like you know uh, i will fight my battle and i will win it and put strategies like you know as i said one at a time so in that your list of uh, uh, like you know supporters who are your top 3 and just work on them and then build up your strategy like that but when you don't have the support the first thing is to work on your own self to be very firm to be very like you know strong enough uh, have that conviction that no matter what it is i will prove it and i will work hard towards it but in parallel work out on all these allies that you want the top 3 that is all is needed nothing more to worry you don't need to bring everyone to support you you just have those one or two it is enough and when you go perform uh when people see results this is again a kind of a psychological uh, thing i've seen when people see results they just change and they say oh wow what you've done it's amazing and you'll have a lot of friends that time i mean when when i won my election uh, i had so many friends coming i mean of course in a good good way so when results speak people automatically look up to you so focus on the results keep your eye on the prize no matter what happens i will just go do it i will deliver it i will achieve it inshallah so that should be the objective when that is firm in your mind then no one can stop everything has to be from within no one is going to take charge of your life you have to ch- take charge of your life and only then you can perform and deliver and uh, this question is for those who believe that you know once you go the family way you have your kids and it is very essential for the mother to raise the kid and then if the mother gets very busy with her profession or her ambition then it reflects on the kids development so what do you have to say on that man see of course the first 7 uh, years are the formative years for any child and this is something even me as a mother i have learned but in that 7 formative years what is the uh, quality of parenting that you want to give to your child that's something you need to understand and uh, the child doesn't keep uh, watching you 24 hours and learn from you there are periods which are very essential critical where you have to be there for them and that's something you can work out and one good thing is now with the like you know there are a lot of flexible working options available in most of the companies say so maybe for the first 3 years use those opportunities so that you will get to understand your child better and you'll know a pattern on what kind of impact you can create and this is something the mother has to do a little like you know a kind of an engineering task to uh, be with them so make use of that flexible working options for the first few years yes it is hard you have to compromise but uh, it's a good compromise because the first four five years you be with the child at least 50% of the time 50% you spend on your career and then once you've inculcated those habits and those practices then for the rest of the life the child becomes independent and that's something i worked on my children the first five years uh, like you know i taught them how to brush their teeth eat their own food dress up themselves these basic things like you know if you are able to teach your children on how to be self responsible then it is good not only for the child but also it gives you like you know some time off from these uh, daily uh, household chores as well in terms of managing the children so that's the way and make use of these flexible working options and now again with covid i think we have this work from home as well so it's a good opportunity to balance that learn those techniques and uh, uh those are uh, time management planning organizing uh, skills but end of the day do not compromise the family the family stands first on for that you work around your calendar around that and which is what i did so worked out my calendar my schedule around that so that family is happy i'm happy so some little compromises have to be made that is okay they are good compromises i wouldn't say compromise but you once 
once telling me that uh, Priya, be very careful because uh, you keeping yourself busy as a mother is the learning you give your child, and that's uh, that really hit me in the right chord. I'm like, uh, so I ensured myself that I keep myself busy, use the energy in the right way because making them sit and giving them lectures may not really work, and we we as a mother have to stand up as an example for them. Uh, you they, know. they see you, like you know, they observe. I mean, with my children, uh, most of the time they've observed what I've been doing, how I interact, how I talk, how I handle uh, situations. And um, I, I mean, over the years, I understood that that children are observing you, and their first role model in any child's life is their mother. So that's something. If every mother thinks to herself that I want to be the role model for my children, then uh, everything falls in place. She will do her best. on how to become that role model and uh, ma'am i have a quick um, if i may say rapid fire questions here <laughs> when i would just give you a, a phrase and then you give me a one word answer it just has to be one word no one sentence it's just one single word yes so we start yes ma'am no no sorry that that's very <laughs> exciting tell me <laughs> first question women power strong your strength family your hobby reading your dream do the craziest things crazy <laughs> success mantra never give up sports athletes athletic i'm athletic three essentials which you require every day without like the most important three essentials which you need every day uh coffee uh second is um, time with my husband time with my children these three things without this i can't so uh, sorry who's your stress breaker uh my husband <laughs> who's rehna amir uh, a risk taker and your take back caption um if they don't i mean this is uh one of uh, 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 an african american uh, legislator she just uh, she mentioned about this if they don't give you a seat at the table you bring your own folding chair <laughs> wow <laughs> they don't that's one school that's that's you it and you go sit and you get your job done and or and you prove yourself so that's really? something it's very very firm if they don't give you a chance i go take the chance i don't wait for others to give me a chance ma'am right now we have a message which is a recorded message from an international educationist and a provost uh, of st teresa university west indies professor dr jagannathan uh, we have a message from him to you ma'am uh, so can i request susan ma'am to please share that message no yeah, sure Madam Rakhina Amir is a dynamic young politician. She is always very curious. She doesn't rely upon others and forms her own judgment and opinion about any issue. She is always I find her passionate about whatever she does. She is excellent communicator, and she has good potential for a very huge success in the political and. Yada life carry. I wish her all luck always. So that was uh, uh, Doctor uh, Professor, uh, Professor Doctor Jagannathan for you, ma'am. You have any uh, message for him? Yeah, I would like to first uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Jagannathan. That was really very kind of you, and it was a very um, a sharp observation about who he thinks Rehana is. And I was really amazed that, like you know, he's been such a strong observer uh, to understand uh, who I am as a person and uh, the confidence that he has that I would, uh, inshallah, excel well. So that's a, a very big responsibility on my shoulders that.
that like you know uh, there's so much of an expectation and uh, people look up to us uh, to like you know that we will bring in that change or bring in that uh, 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 value to the the work that we do so i really feel honored and uh, thank you to professor jagannathan you he really made my day i should say <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a wonderful conversation with you, and like uh, you have uh, given a different definition for women power. Because if I may say, um, you really need not be very aggressive and very assertive in the uh, language you use, because you are one person. Uh, I have always that you have kept your uh, cool, very stable, and uh, you've been very clear in your communication, and you have been so stable when it comes to uh, your emotions. So I think you have got the best of the emotion quotient, and uh, you've been proving great for all that um, uh, stability in your thoughts which you're having. Uh, and uh, with this, I am requesting um, the, Madam Susan Koshi to please come on screen. Um, and uh, also um, our prime point Srinivasan sir, who has been the backbone in getting this aura, um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the concept of aura to come live. So he is the person who's helping all the women around him to be successful, to grow beyond the boundaries. And uh, thank you, Srinivasan sir. Thank you, Susan ma'am. And thank you, Rahina Amir ma'am, for being in the show and for supporting us to take it forward. Thank you so much. It was real pleasure. And thank you, Mr. Srinivas. Amazing, I would say. See, he he he's proved it well that the circle of life is complete only when we have both men and women working together. So that's a very powerful, strong message that I think uh, you as an organization are sh uh, showing it out to the outside world. And this is what our society is about that we reflect, that we need both the men and women to uh, like you know, um, uh, work towards that bigger goal that we aspire for, not only our present, but also for our future. So thank, thank you. you and Susan, ma'am, your, your closing remarks, please. It's been a very inspirational, uh, talk. I was just awed as I kept listening to you, madam. And as Priya has rightly put, your EQ is at a level that uh, something that I look forward to. Thank you so much for sparing your time with us. It's been an excellent time. Likewise.